Okay, cool. All right. Okay. So we're going to start with the branding stuff. Um, did you want to start with the Figma or did you want to start with the Notion doc with uh, going over that, you know, that good old stuff? Yeah, let's do that. Let's start with Notion. So let me stop sharing. Screen share. Okay. Sweet. All right. So I guess we can go straight into the brand assets, uh, brand strategy. Um, oh, yeah. We can start with this card and go from there. Um, okay. Yeah. This was. This is where we kind of started yeah. originally back when we was first considering this. Um, so um, whenever thinking about brand strategy or brand identity, you know, there's a couple of things we want to go over. Um, a couple of things you want to know when it comes to like trying to figure out what your brand is, who you, what your brand represents, and with that, how you want to communicate that to whoever your target audience is. Right. So, um, so yeah, so you want to just kind of start taking us through uh, some of the things that we wrote down regarding like what we wanted. Um, yes, let's do it. So some things we talked about originally, we just kind of brainstormed what our personal values are um, for our personal brand. So we realized kind of early on that values and mission that we had for our personal brands were very aligned. So we started to kind of just walk through um, writing down actual points that we had in terms of words and values that we felt um, exemplified what we stood for as individuals and kind of just tried to find uh, things that overlapped or aligned there. So some values we had, I know like we both really let's, like, let's, other let's take, let's take a step back for a quick second. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, but let's give that context real quick, right? What mm -hmm. about our individual goals and values align? Like what in your mind, like what, what really aligns between yeah. us? So I know that for me, uh, my biggest mission is to, to be able to help people like me, so people of color, women, um, to do basically the, the same thing that I did, to go from the career I was in that wasn't as fulfilling, didn't really give me what I needed, into now having tech skills and being able to build uh, things like this, like a company that um, is going to afford me but us the the opportunities that i've always wanted of being more flexible with my time um and more flexible with just the resources that i have in general so time location and finances um and really just being able to impact the the african-american community and women of color because i feel like we are as a as a subset in tech, we are like the, the least uh, represented and the most underserved. So I think for me, that's kind of where I was. And I know that for you, um, being Black and Mexican, you feel felt the same type of way. I'm not going to speak for you, but um, it seemed like you had a very similar mission for people uh, of color from your perspective as well, if I'm correct in assuming that. Insane. No, yeah, you're right. So like one of the reasons I thought about reaching out to you in the first place with this whole idea is because obviously we shared the idea or the same goal of, you know, making money on our own terms, you know, reaching that, that point of financial stability and security um, and kind of gaining even more autonomy over our lives and how we spend our time. But on a higher level than that, when I think back to uh, the first time I reached out to you actually for that first interview video, cause I still have this goal of having a playlist on my channel of just successful people of color in tech, both women, men, and everyone in between the, all the different races, but specifically of just like all the different, like, you know, people within our community that mm -hmm. would be a, a reference point or could be a reference point for aspiring developers, aspiring creators, aspiring founders, people in tech in general who want, who have, a, who have an interest in joining the tech space, whether that's fresh out of college, high school, as a career change, anything like that, right? Just to really show like, hey, there's, we're out here, even though it, it may not look like it. Um, so yeah, I definitely agree with you that, you know, we have aligned goals socially um, and like with, with, when it comes to like having a positive impact on our community, being able to share the, the knowledge and the wisdom we've gained on our, you know, unconventional journeys into tech and basically being able to provide 
sort of uh, a level of like, you know, clairvoyancy or, you know, be like a, a beacon to other people who want to make that same journey, but also mm -hmm. give them the opportunity to avoid some of the pitfalls we may have experienced or, you know, just give them tips to help them make it faster, you know, because I know that if I knew what I knew today, when I was even just graduating high school, man, yeah. it'd be a, it'd be, it'd be a night and day difference. And that's not even exactly. and like where I am now is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Like compared, mm -hmm. like from my perspective, compared to where I came from, but yeah. you know, I just imagine like, man, like there's a lot of people out there who, if they just had the right info at the right time, mm -hmm. it could be life-changing. And that's really what it's for me, what it's about. Um, just having a positive impact in our community. So I think that's one of the nice things that I agree with you, we align with, which is why we decided to, you know, go into business together. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, um, but yeah, so back to what you were saying. So that's basically, a, you know, a rundown of who we are, what about each other kind of facilitated this, this partnership. Um, and yeah. basically when it came to like, just going through the brand discovery was figuring out how can we create a brand that aligns with or complements our own, you know, goals and values. And that's kind of where we went from there. But you can, uh, if you want to continue going on through the values that we wrote down. Yes. So some of the values that we wrote down, um, clean, minimal design. We noticed that the aesthetic that we that we have on our Instagrams is very, um, has some similar aspects to it and that it's like more moodier and a little clean and minimal. Um, seamlessness, uh, ease of use very intuitive design, efficiency. I'm all about uh, saving time where we can. Um, so we want that to be reflected in things that we do or create. Um, obviously we said impacting the black and brown communities um, and uh, business owners in our community. And then just really highlighting inclusivity and accessibility within tech um, and really all the things that we do. So ideas of services that we, we wanted to get into. So we talked a little bit about this earlier today, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit. Um, so on the, at the top of the list is web design templates, uh, for niche professionals. So I think something that, uh, is important for us to think about as we try to scale at the pace that we're trying to do is, just targeting uh, untapped markets and, and targeting people who maybe are underserved in uh, web design templates. Um, so Joelle made a good point earlier today about doing some more market research and some surveys and getting feedback. Um, so I think that's gonna be really crucial for this first part. Right. Um, branding and um, helping small businesses with the needs that they have with branding and web updates. And honestly, like I know uh, from my personal experience doing a little bit of this and I know Joelle also has experience in this, like small businesses, particularly, I think small businesses in black and brown communities can sometimes have like a lot of needs in terms of updating their digital presence across the board. So there's a lot of different pain points that we could probably use our skill sets to help out with. Um, and then later on down the line, doing ads and SEO services, consulting and um, building like micro SaaS custom tech solutions later on down the line. That's big, big goals. But I think those are all uh, just directions that we definitely could go in um, and are interested in. So there's that. Um, so target audience, we talked about this a little bit, but small businesses and business owners, um, and then also like the freelancers and, and creatives. So people who would be interested in like the journey aspect of what we're doing and learning from us, um, and places where, where we can add value to those people. Then brand and attribute, yeah, please. Okay, cool. Um, I feel like event, I, I wonder if like down the line, we'll get better at just like flowing into so that way we don't feel so awkward, like cutting each other off or not cutting each other oh, off. You're you know I mean? uh, yeah, I'm but, looking for my uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're good. I was just, that's just a, uh, something that I was thinking out. Uh, as you guys can see, like we're still kind of also getting used to one, being comfortable in this, in this space, this macro space of uncomfortableness that we're in regarding this challenge, but two, just like being able to really kind of get comfortable just being 
not even not necessarily ourselves, but just like, you know, working together, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. Because even though, you know, we decide to go this route, we have, we haven't known each other for very long. So that's uh, kind of a, a, ch- a challenge we're working through. But, um, mm-hmm. but one of the things I kind of wanted to bring up was that, you know, for people who may have discovered this or starting to follow this, but don't really know who we are or not, or what we, what we do or where we came from, uh, we both have a specific skill set um, that I think is really going to benefit us when it comes to, you know, pursuing this challenge, right? So, uh, for example, I think I'll go ahead and really quickly just drop that in here. Um, Nicole, if you want to scroll up to where it says services, I think I'm going to add another one, actually. Let me do it this way. Yeah. Boom, let's create a duplicate. And then this will be skills, right? Because I think one of the things that part of the reason people are going to be following this is because they want to know what it's like to obviously start a business or even think about doing that. So I kind of want to provide some context for people who are maybe in the beginning stages or contemplating like, oh yeah, like how do I even figure out what kind of business I want to start or, you know, what direction that I want to go before I even get into branding and things of that nature. Right. Um, So to kind of give some insight here, right. Mm -hmm. Um, For myself, I am, I started off back in high school with, uh, with like drawing and stuff, got into digital art and eventually got into graphic design. Um, from there, I started working, uh, consulting slash contracting with excuse me, a couple of digital agencies, uh, in my youth, um, that basically gave me a lot of exposure to digital marketing. Mm-hmm. And with those skills that I learned, I started trying to find ways that I could do it on my own outside of the digital agency because I saw the money they were making and I was like, why can't I make it myself, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what kind of le- helped me cultivate those skills, taking that graphic designs that I was building myself, but also learning the digital marketing side of things. Um, eventually, I started getting into basic web development, which started off using like website builders like WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, you know, all the big names. I think I started off with Wix. And I had a lot of fun with that and got pretty good at being able to, uh, back when those tools were still fairly new, being able to build custom websites and stuff for different people. Sometimes it was friends, sometimes it was small businesses. Um, but eventually I realized there was a certain limitation that I would hit. Um, it was, I used to go on like, you know, awards.com or Dribbble or Behance and see like these beautiful sites that were super custom. And I knew, I knew that for me to get to that point, I would have to learn how to code. And that's what basically Mm -hmm. gave my interest into learning how to code, right? And that's where I am now. Now I'm basically uh, into software engineering or software development, whatever you want to call it, on uh, both like, you know, web and mobile platforms. And that's basically kind of the skill set that I have. Um, Now, digital marketing, more recently, while I was also learning software development, I got into uh, brand strategy and sort of basically is kind of like the, the superset above digital marketing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basic skill set that I know that I have, uh, to offer when it comes to trying to find something to make money with. Right. Uh, Nicole, I'll let you do yours. That way you can kind of give people an idea of what skill set you have. Yes. So let me do the same thing. So for me, I actually, I went to college with the intention of getting my PhD actually, um, in psychology. So, Um, I was on that track. So I'll just put that there. Um, When I left college, when I graduated from college, I went abroad and um, was living in Malaysia for a year teaching English. Um, So there's that. So it was there while I was uh, traveling abroad, meeting a lot of new people, a lot of expats that I uh, realized that there are a lot of people who get to travel the world. A lot of them call themselves digital nomads. Um, they get to travel the world and they're working from their laptops. And a lot of them are working like minimal hours uh, a day, right? Um, and so just getting into that, I had a cousin who was over in Malaysia around the same time I was in there over there and um, she was working for a company uh, and they were all just building these digital skills. So when I came home, I also got into digital marketing. Um, and I'll also say like content marketing specifically, because I was working mostly in social media and like copywriting, that kind of stuff. Um, and did that for a little bit. And then 
I ended up just like randomly getting an opportunity at a tech startup. And that's kind of where I got my introdu introduction into the tech industry. Um, and um, also my introduction to code. So I was watching our development team build an application using artificial intelligence and um, seeing how they were building the different aspects of the, the SaaS that we were selling to our customers. And it was just super interesting to me. And because we were such a small team, um, it was really easy for me to kind of pick the brains of the developers that were on the team. So um, that grew into an opportunity to like once a week at lunch was learning Python and things like that. Um, and then when I quit my job, um, I quit because uh, if anyone has ever had experience at a startup, it's not always like sunshine and roses. Um, and I quit because of like toxic work environment and things like that. So when I quit, I decided that I was going to just pursue the opportunity myself uh, to get into code. So I learned myself um, in mostly front end development for a while. Um, and then after about I would say a year of learning and also using the little bit of skills that I had to kind of help people with, um, what is it called? Like web development with uh, Shopify and different app builders like that. Uh, WordPress, Shopify. Um, I think Wix was one of them that I've done before and um, then decided to do a boot camp after getting a little bit of experience under my belt. Um, so now I'm trained in full stack uh, development, particularly in JavaScript, uh, the Node, Express, React, and Postgres stack, if that's even one, a NERP stack. So that's kind of where I'm at now. That's what's up. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I just wanted to give the opportunity for people to have an understanding of like what skills we had so that way they would understand why we chose or are looking at the services we're looking at providing. And I, and I say services, but in reality, like it's a mixture of like products and services, right? Mm -hmm. Because like digital, like web templates and stuff, those are going to be like digital products. If that was the route that we decided to go. Uh, so I'm going to actually move that up. Now I will say um, that's not like one of the way, one of the things that we're kind of trying to figure out right now is like where we want to start. And I, I feel like we both kind of come to the agreement that we are primarily looking at the uh, digital product space first before client services, only because uh, digital products have the lowest barrier to entry. Uh, it requires the least labor in terms of like, create, like all you have to do is create it the first time. Um, and then from there, you can sell it multiple times, you know, multiple people may you know, find the same product valuable and decide to purchase it for themselves, whether that's a web template or a wallpaper pack or an icon set, um, or even like, you know, digital guides and eBooks. So mm -hmm. with that being said, um, having, I feel like a lot of the skills that we have kind of provide an opportunity there for that. Um, but I am a hundred percent considering, or I guess we are a hundred percent considering client services as well, just because we have between the two of us, a very wide set of skills um, mm -hmm. and at this point it's more so just deciding like where we want to kind of narrow in, because obviously like, we don't want to just go into the market saying, you know, oh, you know, we're a jack of all trades, master of none, give us your problems. Because I feel like that would be yeah. both hectic and not conducive for the time frame that we're trying to work in. So, um, but anyways, go ahead and continue, Nicole, where you want to head to next? <laughs> no, you're good. Um, all right. So where did we leave off? So we started kind of going into his services. Um, so we mentioned that, you know, being that we both come from like a digital marketing background, branding makes sense, branding and brand strategy, creating brand, brand well, creating the brand strategy, creating brand identity and everything that kind of revolves around that, um, especially because that's where um, a lot of like, you know, small businesses and startups and founders and creators often kind of lack, uh, especially within our communities. And that ranges for a variety of reasons that we could probably get into later. But um, so that is one option that we're looking at um, small businesses in need for a web update. It was talking about, you know, possibly there's a lot of small businesses with terrible sites, unfortunately. So being able to offer web redesign or web development ads and SEO mm -hmm. services. How much do you have a lot of experience with ads or SEO stuff, Nicole? Not really. I like I was adjacent to it always. So I'm familiar, but I never actually got experience myself. Although I do have a couple of Udemy courses that I can get to. 
uh, nice. to learn pretty quickly. <laughs> so That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, it was always something I wanted to get into. I just never actually got the experience myself. That's fair. But yeah. Um, I have a lot of SEO experience. Um, my ad experience was fairly limited up until recently uh, at the place that I'm working full time. Man, I have done such a deep dive over the last two and a half going on three weeks of uh, between Google ads, Facebook ads and analytics and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. it got to a point where like one, I've had a very major impact on uh, fixing a lot of the problems at that particular company, specifically with like their ad campaigns. And um, mm -hmm. now I feel like I've kind of taken what I thought I knew and really solidified it because now I've, you know, before it was all high level, like, you know, reading, learning, taking courses, but being able to actually work with a real company with real money and, and actually like seeing the effects of that has like really solidified things for me. So definitely uh, cool with ad and SEO. Um, consulting. How do you feel about consulting, Nicole? I feel like it's something I always like, felt like eventually I would get to, I would love to do it. I love working directly with uh, people, problem solving. Um, and like that little bit of teaching background, I feel like that would come in handy. Cause I really do like um, being able to, to like provide whatever knowledge I do have on things and help people find solutions. I feel, you. I feel good about it. Yeah. Same thing. Well, uh, I feel like I have, I feel like I'm good at teaching. I've never been in a teaching position, right? But I've done some mentorships. Um, I've uh, tutored people who are currently in boot camps, and um, you know, did a lot of that stuff for a while. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like because of the experience that I have from my time in the industry and a lot of the things I've touched, I've gotten really good at solving problems and creating systems, which mm -hmm. um, have really been, or which are actually like really impactful to the right businesses, depending on the situation. Um, yeah. I feel like a part of a, a lot of businesses issues, or a lot of people's issues, even, um, is a lack of like systems and processes. Those things make your life super easy, uh, super easier. And, um, even though that's the kind of a high level term, cause same thing with consulting, we have to eventually niche down to like, what type of consulting do we want to do? Like technology consulting or, uh, brand and strategy consulting, marketing consulting, you know, but I want to keep it high level for now, just so that way we can kind of just obviously just make it a bullet point in our you know, consideration of different services. Um, yeah, for sure. Custom I agree. tech I solutions. Like no, nah, I feel you. Well, how do you, what do you think about when we said custom tech solutions? Do you remember exactly what context we were thinking of? I know that you had mentioned um, micro SaaS mm -hmm. and just trying to build a solution that we could re like basically duplicate over a particular industry or something like that, which is super interesting to me. And I think, um, I definitely agree, like pinpointing a specific pain point that a particular, uh, what is it? Professional or industry has, and then building a solution to it and just kind of tailoring it to whatever specific business is going to buy it. Yeah. For people who don't know, um, Basically, SaaS stands for software as a service. Um, basically, anything you would pay like a subscription for uh, online. But um, micro SaaS are just like these very small versions of this. So they've kind of started cropping up as a more trendy term recently because you're starting to see a lot of tools that are being created that solve like one specific purpose or like they fix one problem. And usually that problem is like niche to a specific industry or, or a role. Um, but because they are, you know, they're really good at doing that one thing. They end up falling into, you know, whatever business stack of uh, that of said industry. And the idea is that, you know, with that micro SaaS, because you're solving one problem, it's less overhead because you're, you know, you're doing a lot less logic. Um, but you're also able to still make, you know, a lot of money because even if you're charging, like, I don't know, 10 to $50 a month or, you know, a couple thousand dollars a year, et cetera. Um, if you solve a, a problem that a lot of people have and a lot of people will drop that, you know, decide to adopt your product then you know, obviously that scales and makes you a lot of recurring revenue. So uh, that's something that, you know, I've been interested in just because, I mean, everybody wants to create a startup. Everybody wants to create the next big startup, but that's, that's, I feel like there's levels to it. And mm -hmm. I, I feel like at least the one of the nice things about micro SaaS is, is because of the, the limited scope of whatever project you decide to start, um, it's easier to maintain with a smaller team and there's less, less costs associated with it. I don't have to go and do like, you know, four rounds of funding to get started. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's uh, another idea we're considering. Yeah. But right. um, yeah, I'll let you go.
So we talked about target audiences, um, some brand attributes were just kind of brainstorming words that felt aligned with the, the direction we wanted to bring this brand. Um, rare, unconventional, progressive, uh, pioneering, trail, trailblazing, mystical, ambassador, agent, representative. Um, I think another word that we um, landed on but didn't mention here was bold. Um, and I think that kind of like wraps up a lot of those ones, just like being um, very bold in our mission. I think the fact that we emphasize the, the, um, the fact that, you know, our identities are, I won't say unique, but like for being uh, tech creators, um, tech entrepreneurs, you don't see enough representation, I think, of people that look like us. So Black women, um, and just in general, women and men of color, so just being bold in our mission of, of uh, being trailblazers, pioneers. Uh, um, Joelle mentioned like being kind of like these beacons of light for our communities. And I think that takes a very bold stance. So leading that, leading us into our mission. Oh, we did end up saying bold down here. Um, so mission is to inspire, motivate, and catalyze the growth and improvement of our community through the development of technical and non-technical skills, um, and to excite the growth of small businesses through the use of minimal yet impactful branding and design. So obviously the first one is more targeted towards the, um, communities that, uh, we could help in terms of our skill set, And then the other would be more of the service side of, who we could help there um, and what our mission is with the small businesses and business owners that we want to target. I think that uh, if I may also uh, kind of touch back on the brand attributes and then the mission, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to brand attributes, right? So the idea is that you want to have like a strong, like set of attributes that make your brand kind of stand apart, right? Cause the idea is like, you have to stand out in some way. Um, so with this list, I mean, we were kind of just throwing words on the board, just trying to see kind of what felt right or at least close. Um, so the, the way that we started, we, we was thinking about that process was kind of describing like ourselves or how we viewed like one, our personalities and then two, like our position in the current industry, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like the position in the industry, uh, that's kind of where rare, unconventional pioneering um, kind of come into play because as far as like the overall industry being a tech industry, um, there is a pretty large, you know, lack of diversity. So being a person of color or being a, a woman or being both in the tech industry, like that is something that makes you um, a little bit more rare because most people, when you, if you, if you once, for those of you who end up transitioning into the tech industry, you'll see like, you know, the typical face of the tech industry does not look like us. You know, the typical portrayal does not look like us. So um, that's something that we kind of wanted to try and carry into the brand, still trying to figure out how we're going to do that because being rare is, uh, it's something that's easier to say than to do, right? But I feel like with the level of like being unconventional and progressive, like those are things that are, I find that are pretty valued uh, within our communities and thus uh, hopefully in our industry. Now, like where kind of mystical kind of came into play is because uh we're both what we would consider like designer developers. So um, a lot of, there, there was a, toy, a, a term coined a while ago for it called unicorns, but that's kind of being lost, like changed up now. But basically uh, the traditional way of thinking about things is developers require you to use a certain part of your brain, right? You're a very logical person. You're really good at creating systems, processes, you're about efficiency, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, being a designer taps into a whole different side of your brain and personality. It taps into creativity, taps into empathy. Um, it taps into your ability to envision things that aren't there and then materialize it by designing it, you know, from nothing or taking abstract concepts and visualizing them. So for a long time, it was very rare to find somebody who possessed the abilities to do both. And then even rarer to find people who did to do, to want to do both. Right. Uh, because then you end up juggling a lot of hats. So uh, that's where the, we, we came with mystical because we didn't just want to use the cliche term unicorn. Uh, but that is something that we kind of want to bring to the brand because we, like I said, as a design studio or whatever, we decide a boutique, you know, consulting business, we offer a very unique set of services that touch 
a lot of the different sides of the business. And that's something that I think is going to set us apart in terms of our offering, even at our size, because I don't feel like you're going to have that. That's not going to be very common at our size. Um, when it comes to like the ambassador, agent, and representative, we kind of came that we, we view ourselves as ambassadors for our community, right? For the communities of color, for black people, for Latinx people, for, for anybody that is a minority, like we see ourselves as a, as a, a hopefully an agent of change and, a, and somebody who's going to have, you know, a positive impact. So we want to be able to bring that to the brand, uh, ideally with, by being able to focus on a target audience of business owners, creators, founders of color, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's kind of how we played it into the mission, right? So you like one of my, like, I kind of took this from something I've said about myself for a long time, but like uh, my mission personally, and then us hopefully translates to, through our brand is to inspire and motivate, motivate and catalyze the growth and improvement of our community through the development of both technical and non-technical skills. The way that we do that already, we both have YouTube channels devoted to teaching people about technology, trying to change the, 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 the social, I, what I believe is a socially conditioned notion that tech or th- technology is, is very complicated and we are simple minded or that we don't have, if you're not good at math or you're a genius or you're not great in school, that you are, you know, not suited or, or the tech industry is inaccessible to you. We're working, you know, we've been working to actively change that thought process. And then we want to be able to take that and also bring that to businesses by taking the things that we know and like helping, you know, businesses created by people like us, for people like us to kind of rise up and, and it really hit the next level if they haven't already. Sure. I know that was kind of a mouthful, but yeah. No, that I think it was all good. And I think like, um, you know, going back to like the businesses, I think having that representation of having developers, designers build something that understand the community that these uh, businesses are targeting. Um, I think that's super impactful because I think a lot of the culture and messaging can sometimes be lost if you're not in tune with it. So I think that is a strength that we can can play to to really help the businesses that we that we set out to. So um, yeah, that's beautiful. I think it's all great. Um, all right, so name ideas. Uh, probably from the screen sharing, you see that like we landed on Umber. How did we come to Umber? I know like one thing that I really love is like a very short, simple name. Um, And we were looking at um, just like synonyms of a lot of the words that we threw out there already. Um, But Umber, how, what was the story? (laughs) How did we land on Umber? It just felt right once we did land on it. But so um, if I remember correctly, when we was trying to come up with name ideas, granted, like, I know it looks like we have a lot of stuff planned out already, but I promise you this wasn't like all in one day, right? Because this stuff, this was like, yeah. this was like over, you know, a couple of loose conversations, but what, um, what ended up happening, right? We, we both knew that, like, we liked a couple of things when it came to names, we wanted it to be short and memorable for one. So I know Nicole specifically mentioned, she's like, I love single syllable words, something that's mm-hmm. super easy to say, super easy to remember, right? Uh, so I was originally trying to like, okay, let's try and find something that's short, really short, and concise. Um, but the second thing is that one thing that I really brought in uh, for her was simplicity. For me, it was symbolism, right? Uh, <laughs> SNS, look at that. But yeah, for me, it was, for me, it was symbolism. I'm really into uh, deeper meanings and things that have that that go deeper than the surface level because I feel like it gives us more to kind of chew on, right? Um, so I'm a sucker for symbolism and I want to find something that would be representative of not only our, you know, our mission, but really just the community we're trying to represent and speak to, because I feel like that's one of the things that's kind of unique about where we're coming from is that, um, we're not just a random company or a random organization or a random group of people targeting, targeting this, you know, people of color or minority minorities, but we're actually one of them, right? Uh, and we're taking mm-hmm. a lot of things that we've struggled with and using that as experience and fuel. So I wanted there to be a connection that was that went beyond just, you know, uh, obvious, you know, naming convention. So started looking at a lot of different stuff and I was trying to find different words. I like the letter U because I don't, I don't feel like it's used very often. It's just like Z to me. Um, and I came across the word umber, right? So at first I thought... Um, I think we had I, one of the words I was originally coming up thinking of was the um, 
Pokemon is called Umbreon, but the, the, the main word from it is called uh, Umbra, which is U-M-B-R-A, right? So Umbra is uh, a Latin term, if I don't, if I remember correctly. Uh, Umbra means like the shadow of a celestial object, if I'm not mistaken. Um, short for, uh, it's like a shorter version of Penumbra. But no, so there's Umbra, Penumbra, and Antumbra, but that's like, a, you know, further down the line. So basically, um, Umbra is the shadow of a source. And I was like, oh, I love that name. I love the Pokemon Umbreon. It looks cool. It's dark and moody. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to give the idea or the notion that we're saying like, you know, we're the, like, you know, we exist in the shadow or like, you know, because I feel like it's already kind of the notion that our community is like in the shadow of another, you know, if not the minority, yeah. or the shadow of the majority. I didn't want to tie. I feel like it, it was too close to that. As much as I love the word Umbra, I was like, I can't do that. Right. So I was trying to find yeah. other words that sounded like that or had something to similar effect. And that's how I came across Umber. So I initially like pitched it to Nicole. I was like, hey, what do you think about the word umber? And she's like, oh, I kind of like it. It's that and the other. But when I, the reason why I decided to offer that in the first place is because umber is a, essentially like a pigment. It's a natural pigment. The official definition is that it's a natural pigment resembling, resembling but darker than ochre, normally like a dark yellowish brown in color. Um, long story short, it's a type of brown. It's like a brown, reddish, yellowish kind of color, right? And uh, one of the things that I liked about that color specifically is that one, I see it in a lot of, a lot of places, both, you know, culturally and in our skin. Right. But I felt like it kind of met that goal of combining the simplicity with symbolism because it's simple and short, easy to remember, but it's also symbolic in the fact that we're trying to choose a word or a name that is representative of that, which we represent or that community in which we're from. And that's kind of how we decided on that, right? Right. And I love it. I feel like it rolls off the tongue. Um, and I think when we think about our larger vision, I feel like it it feels like it will grow with us as we grow and scale and, and dive deeper into certain aspects of the missions that we have of impacting our community. So I love it. Um, it just but, feels uh, right. It does. I, I agree. Yeah. And then, uh, but yeah, uh, then we just kind of threw some more words that we uh, were thinking of. Mm-hmm. I think that pretty much ended that document, right? I don't think there's any more to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so then we took that and we started working on like our strategy and positioning, uh, which we put in a different document. Do you want to go over that or? Where is this up here? Scroll somewhere. up. Oh yeah, there it is. Brand strategy. So. All right. Yeah. So obviously this looks super long. It's really not. And we're probably just going <laughs> to skim through it. Maybe we'll post this up somewhere. Like we should like definitely like when we create a website, just like throw a lot of this stuff up there so people can like read through yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. And use it yeah. if they want. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, so I just kind of took this layout from, um, there's a couple of different ways to kind of go about creating your brand strategy, but um throughout a lot of the different resources they kind of all fall on the same thing right creating like your story um you know some of your goals deciding your positioning in the market or the industry what your messaging will kind of be who it is that you're targeting um and uh kind of going from there right because it gives you somewhere strong to start and one of the cool things about like taking the time because this definitely takes time uh to like write all this stuff out almost like a journal right is that you'll have a point of reference to whenever you're doing something down the line and you're trying to, if you want to maintain, you know, continuity with the brand that you originally started with or the identity that you're starting with, um, you can kind of use this almost like a, as a sounding rod against some of the decisions that you're making, right? Aside mm-hmm. from like just monetary decisions. So, um, so yeah, so we started off with the brand story. Um, I guess it says Umber and Umber Society. Should we explain what Umber Society, the idea behind that is? Yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if we should get into it, but I know that we both had um, have a desire of building community um, to impact. I mean, like everything that we've said so far, I mean, we want to be able to build a community that is empowering people in, in Black and Brown communities to um, understand that tech is accessible, to build the skills that they need to um, what, whatever it might be, build businesses, land, higher paying jobs, whatever. Um, and we also have a desire as, aside from building, um, a design studio and something where we're helping businesses with their digital presence to also 
create a space that is safe to build community for people who are also trying to do similar things as us and people who have similar goals and desires for themselves and just a place for us to really pour into that community really aligned with our personal brands of um, trying to impact uh, black and brown people, women in the um, who are trying to get into tech or who are trying to grow and thrive in, in tech. Um, so we also have a desire to create a space like that um, where we can educate, empower, inspire, um, and just support in whatever way we can. So yeah. I couldn't really have said it much better myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I think another thing I really love about the name is just that um, Umber, um, we shorten it to you. And that's the more user focused aspect of what we're doing, the, the aspect where we are focused on an serving individual. A, an individual. Yeah. And then us. Um, it's community and that's exactly what we stand for is building us up. So I like it. Yeah. I think it's going to be pretty, pretty great going forward. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so then we started uh, just trying to come up with some like high level goals, right. Of like what we want to be. So obviously right now, like we're thinking about the hundred day challenge, right. Uh, before we wasn't necessarily thinking about a hundred day challenge. So we was just yeah. like, you know, what are some like, you know, loose places that we just kind of want to shoot for. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like the difference between doing this and like doing something like the hundred day challenge is that this, like when you have a lot of space in between, it's let, it feels like less pressure. Uh, and I feel like that can be a good and a bad thing because on, you know, on one hand, like, okay, one year we want to be able to serve clients who take, you know, the brand, and the business to the next level by offering these different services. And, and granted, like this isn't a commitment necessarily what we're going to do within a hundred days, but just a high level idea of what direction we think we kind of want to go. Um, given the, you know, skill sets that we have and like the ideas that we have as, you know, for managing a business. But when it comes to like setting yourself up to like doing something like within a hundred days, that pressure and that accountability you put on yourself, I think is what's really going to kind of get you going, but it's important to have, you know, a far away target because eventually you're going to reach that, that short-term goal and you got to figure out what you're going to do next. Right. So that's kind of what we did. We just threw up a, a quick one, one year, three year and a five year plan. Um, these are just kind of pulled out of, out of the air. So some of these numbers are maybe too, too high or too low, but um, that's just the, the thought process that we put behind uh, setting some high level goals. Um, I guess scrolling down, uh, I know that one of the things that we wanted to be known for, at least as a as a partnership is, you know, we want to be a top, a top level business or brand consultant, uh, you know, known for taking like these, you know, BIPOC owned or people of color owned or whatever you want to call it, these minority owned businesses to the next level. Right. I want people to be able to look at us and be like, you know, when somebody's thinking like, oh yeah, like I'm going to do a startup or, oh yeah, I want to, you know, take my creative business or my, uh, career as a creator, be it like a coach or a YouTuber or whatever to the next level. They like, when they think of the brand that specializes in helping people like them do that, I want us to come into mind. So that'd be really Sorry. cool. I guess I'll keep going. No worries. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it's, it's the best thing though. Like doing this live, like you're going to, this, this is, this is life. life you know, happens. I, yeah. I got, I got dogs running in and out of the room and yeah. you, you got Mine. neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Um, and my dog's like, begging me to come play with her too so um yeah. but yeah life happens um but uh but yeah I back to what you were saying I do agree like we want to be be known for like the people we want to be top of mind when people are trying to find um particularly like a unique perspective on building these uh designs and branding and um building um like the the digital aspects of, of businesses up and helping them to become successful. Definitely want to be top of mind for that kind of stuff. So, but uh, you know. what we will own in people's minds is the next section. So like a couple of things that we obviously, when I think of like, you know, what will people think of us for, right? We want to be known for like having the secrets to building a successful brand and business. And I put secrets in, quote, in quotes for a reason, because it's not a secret. Uh, a lot of this stuff is available, but a lot of the time is like when you're trying to build something or 
most of the people that uh, a lot of people in our communities are suffer from like, you know, a lack of resources, a lack of guidance. Uh, so even yeah. though a lot of that stuff may be accessible to the, on the internet, people don't often know where to look. Right. And that or alone it exists to look for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't know what they don't know. So yeah. With that being said, like I want, I want us to be able to be able to, to offer that level of guidance because it's already hard enough for us out there, right? And we get it because we we've, we've been through it, you know what I mean? Uh, so I feel like having that unique perspective and knowing exactly, like you know, maybe not exactly what what a, a person or a company's story is, but having an, a good idea just from like you know social relativity, I feel like it's mm-hmm. going to help us out a lot. Um, we want to have a suite of award-winning, you know, digital assets and products have no idea what they're going to be yet, but we're working on figuring that out. Uh, and we want to have a community. Like that's one of the reasons we're doing this in public, right. That we can be committed yeah. to even like throwing this crazy high level goal in such a short time frame and like putting ourselves out there, uh, and, and with, with all the vulnerability that comes along with that, right. Is that we want to be able to bring or to build a community around this process to show that one, you know, a lot of stuff is possible. If you push your mind to it, even more stuff is possible when you add technology into the mix. And then all that same stuff is possible for people that look like us. You know what I mean? So building a community around this process, I feel like was really going to be really, uh, really, uh, I feel like is really important to this part of the journey. Uh, Mm -hmm. and we, we really want to be known for like incubating the upcoming leaders in the tech uh, in tech and like the BIPOC businesses as a whole. Cause I feel like I have this high level vision going on a slight tangent of like where our community could be in the next 20 to 50 years as yeah. more people start to rise up and exactly yeah. take charge of their lives with the right mm-hmm. resources, the right knowledge. And then the wisdom passed down from those before them, like, yeah, it's going to be a whole new socioeconomic landscape. And I want us to be able to spearhead that. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, I agree. And I think like a big reason why I got into this is because number one, I didn't see myself represented in the people I was looking up to, to, to start doing this. And um, number two, I felt like, you know, if we're not being represented, if we're not being given the right um, equitable opportunity, like, we're going to be left behind as a community. And I didn't want to see that happen. So doing whatever I can um, to to help people just find the guidance, access to resources and all that that they can, that's super important. And I think our impact can only be exponentially multiplied if we're doing it together as this entity rather than just like separate. So mm, feeling good about it. Mm -hmm. it. Okay, let's see um positioning so okay so for those of you who don't know right because i know there's probably plenty of people who have no idea about brand strategy or about creating the brand or going this deep into it right but positioning is really important because if you want to stand out right you have to make one be clear about what your position is in the industry in the la- in the landscape positioning can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people but i essentially like in a nutshell it's here's what i believe in here's what i don't believe in here's what i'm for here's what i'm against And just really getting clear about like where you sit on a spectrum, right? Because everything's a spectrum. Politics Mm -hmm. is a spectrum. Uh, Morality is a spectrum. Like everything that we can think of conceptually, especially when you deal with like like society, like all these concepts are are, are, are all spectrums, right? Because there's a lot of gray area. There's not, nothing's really just black and white. So Mm -hmm. getting clear on like the position of your brand, I think really helps, um, again, just help guide how you make your decisions, uh, whether yeah. that's behind how you interact with your audience or the arguments that you're targeting or, you know, all things kind of related around that. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> but, uh, good. I think go ahead, Nicole. You hit the nail on the head. Um, so we just uh, found a few businesses or companies, entities that um, we felt like were competitors or in the same space that we are trying to forge our own place in so um i don't know how deeply we want to go into these do you want to Uh, uh, not necessarily i mean basically like we have some inspiration like one blind is the main inspiration for me just because i follow chris doe and the future on youtube shout out you guys are amazing um Mm -hmm. i follow i've been following them for i can't even remember how long and like i literally just grind through their feed i eventually want to be part of their pro group 
uh, just for my own. That should be a, a, a goal for us within the first like year or two. We should definitely do that because I've been following them for probably about, I want to say four years now. Like it was around yeah. the time where I started getting into digital marketing and stuff. So mm-hmm. So yeah, I think just that, like, wouldn't it be crazy if like we blew up and then just joined the pro group and then like, you know, would, just started just further and develop this, this. I'm telling you, there's, there's something, we have something here. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so we had a couple, we listed like kind of some businesses that were inspiration. Obviously we still are kind of working on this, but uh, blind is one. Uh, I like this company I found called black business boom. Um, basically they specialize in doing social media services and branding and marketing packages ideally targeting, so coming from the name, targeting black business. Um, Mm -hmm. Then they had a pretty cool community outreach program that I liked um, and kind of want to model off of. Uh, But basically the the high level of this purpose is to try and figure out like, you know, who your inspiration is, what do you like about them? What do you want to keep, right? Who your direct competitors are, how you're going to differentiate yourself from them, who your indirect Mm -hmm. competitors are, and try to get an idea of like the market outside of your individual or direct niche. Um, And then like, you know, the gaps, trying to find the gaps in that. So you can figure out like, what gap can you fill? Right. And the only thing I could really specifically say is that there's not a lot of people specifically targeting BIPOC owned businesses. I could be wrong, but from my, the hard part is like, when you try and like, you can't like just type in Google, like companies that target black people, right. (laughs) Companies companies that target (laughs) black owned businesses. Cause like, it's not as trying to it's find hard, that. yeah it's hard to find yeah it's hard and to I create feel that like search term it, and i don't know like this this is a probably a, a whole another conversation that we could have at another time but i do feel like just what kind of content is favored on like the platforms that we use i feel like that is why it's so hard to find like i don't for a long time i didn't feel like there were people like black women a lot of black women in tech and like as I started to grow in that presence, I started to find them, but like, it's hard to actually find black people doing stuff like this. Um, And I feel like um, that's kind of like by design at this time, but Mm -hmm. it's really Mm -hmm. hard to like really research this kind of stuff. Um, And I can imagine. I'm sorry. Finish what you're saying. No, um, but uh, I was going to say like, it's either like, um you have to really do digging on like who's on the team of this company and like it's not like very openly um like a part of what that brand stands for or like their culture or whatever or it's like they're just so small that you um you can't find them or like so it's just hard to find them but I guess yeah small would be the reason why you can't find them as much but I mean even breed creators still have to still struggle with like being Uh you know silenced in a way or, or censored in a way, you know, people seeing yeah. like, you know, their engagement just drop off out of nowhere when they, you know, approach a certain topic or say certain things or, and I'm not even talking about like super controversial things. I mean, it just happens. you like, I mean, how many times have you yeah. scrolled on TikTok or Instagram and found somebody like, yo, I don't know what's going on, but suddenly my stuff just isn't being shown to my followers. That actually happened to me this week when, after we launched our thing, like my engagement on Instagram went, went down, like, by 50% almost on that's what I'm saying like which is weird I don't know I don't know if it's like related but based on the information I've had accumulated over time I feel like it definitely has something to do with it but it's weird and I think that a lot of a lot of these problems won't be solved until we have more people like us in the tech space right because as of right now the tech space has been created built designed by people who a majority of people who don't look like us don't care about us don't know about our communities, don't know about our cultures, don't respect any of those aspects, right? So now you have, and it's no surprise now that you have situations pop up where like algorithms are inherently biased towards uh, people of fair or lighter skin, right? Or how you have said algorithms being introduced into like really like impactful services like the police force or, you know, surveillance. And now we're getting a lot of people who are being flagged or targeted (laughs) <laughs> for no reason like you know what i mean it's like not funny but it's just like seriously. it's not funny but it's it, like it's crazy like but i feel like again like not, none of this is really going to be solved or taken with the level of seriousness that it needs to until we do it ourselves you know what i mean yeah. which is why i feel like it's really imperative that we as or somebody but in this case we want to try and be that business or that entity or that that group that focuses on accelerating 
the insertion of more of us into this industry, because that's the only way that we're going to be able to build our own social media platforms, our own, uh, you know, e-commerce markets, our own fiat and, uh, you know, fiat and non-fungible tokens and currencies. Like that's the only way we're going to be able to make that work. But yeah. again, like you said, rant for another day, another time. Um, so yeah, scrolling down some more, <laughs> continuing on, uh, you have your messaging. All right, so messaging. Yep. All right. So what do we believe in? So we believe in using good design and a greater strategy to transform businesses in a digital world. Um, and then for Umber Society, we believe in inclusivity, equity of opportunity in the tech industry. Um, so empowerment is the key word here for that. Um, our primary internal culture um, to just be driven by exploration, experimentation, and fun. I think that aligns greatly with both of us and what we desire out of having, creating our own kind of business and opportunity for ourselves. Um, so exploration, exploratory is the word there. I want to real word. quick interject because I, I deserve, he deserves uh, props for this. Um, a lot of this, like, cause there's a lot of different ways you can, you know, go through brand strategy and documenting this stuff. Right. Um, but in a pinch, when I was looking at stuff, I keep found, found I kept, came across another creator, Dane Walker. Uh, he's been throwing a bunch of ads everywhere. And of course, naturally they're popping up all over my feed because we're looking to get into this industry. Um, yeah. and this is basically like his steps. Like I've just started using his steps as an outline. Um, and I think that the, the strategy he's created or the steps that he uses, at least in this stage, um, are really nice and really good. So I wanted to give him a shout out and credit, go check out Dane Walker. Um, at some point I'll probably include him in the description of the YouTube video, just so that way, you know, people know, like, listen, like that's where I got this from, but continue. Cool. Okay. Describing our audience. Um, so BIPOC creatives, leaders, and founders, um, and then they all have dreams and aspirations, uh, and, they have dreams and aspirations, even without the opportunities that others may have. So um, we all know that there are typically more obstacles to entry into an industry like this one for um, black and brown people of color. Um, so just wanting to help those visionaries to make it in this in this industry and just um, reach their goals. Sorry, I had a brain fart. You're good. So what will our voice be to them? So we're going to speak with them with sincerity, empathy, and guidance to provide them with clarity. Um, we have both been in the places that um, our target audience is currently. So just being genuine with them and just trying to help them through as best we can. Um, I feel like uh, one thing I want to tap into, because I can only imagine like it's already hard enough as us existing in this in society, right? But when as a person or you know, as a black person or a person of color trying to create a business, like you have to deal with a number of obstacles, like, you know, being taken seriously, you know, access to funding or, you know, all crazy, like all kinds of different, you know, aspects, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, yeah. And I can only imagine like, you know, as somebody who maybe you're going to get started or is hiring a, a studio or an agency or somebody that kind of help accelerate them. I never, I, I, I imagine there's a, there's been situations where people feel like, do they even really understand me, what I'm going through, the obstacles that I face and is their solution really going to help me? Right. Um, right. And I feel like one of the coolest things that we're going to be able to do is be like, listen, I, we understand we're we you, understand. we've been there. Yeah. We like, we, we, we under, we all have an understanding and a connection on a deeper level than just business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's just something I kind of want to point out. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, so what do we want them to feel? We want them to feel understood, empowered, um, and empowered to manifest their dreams. Lucidity. Um, yeah, that's what we're here for. We just want to help people in any way we can. All right, targeting. Yeah. All right, so our primary audience. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if you want me to talk or if you want to say <laughs> it. I don't know. Um, we can just, I'll give you on. Um, okay, so... We talked about BIPOC small business owners. Um, so you want to talk about this um, insert that you put in there? Oh, yeah. So um, basically, I just found the snippet that I took from, I forgot what statistic or what site I brought it from. Uh, I probably have a link somewhere. But basically, you know, top industries among Black African-American bone businesses are generally employment services, companies or enterprises, uh, travel services. You have a lot of people who will come up and be travel agents. 
Um, I'll have people at dentists. They'll become at like dental offices and stuff. And then also like food manufacturing and, and, and food service. I feel like we have so much more to offer as a community, but this is primarily the direction that we've gone. So I just dropped that in there just because like that kind of gives an insight as to like where the yeah. audience, our audience kind of resides or what industries they primarily occupy. Yeah. That's really interesting, especially since like at this point, most industries are leaning heavily on tech. So, you know, you would want to see more of us veering that way. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I like that. All right. So demographics, 20 to 40. I think that's a good range. Yeah, I just do that. We just that. do that number in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the tech industry, service industry, um, creators industry. So we kind of fit in all those kind of spots. So helping people in those specific areas. Um, and then people with GED or some college experience. Um, I feel like our target audience would be that. I, I feel like there may even be people. With um, no experience. Even, right? With no experience. Not even experience, know, but no like college. higher education. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I definitely feel like it's not going to be exclusive to people who have like certain amounts of education. I think that yeah. we're here to prove that it doesn't really matter what your background is. P- specifically in education, I feel like this is an accessible field, um, even though it's not made out to be. All right. Psychographics. Yeah. So psychographics for those. Yeah, I got you. Basically psychographics for those who don't know, is like, think of it like demographics, but you're digging deeper than just the, like the statistics of what makes somebody who they are as a per- as a human and more so of like, how do they think? How do they act? How do they behave? Think of like the demographics yeah. of your, of their minds, right? They call those psychographics because it's based in psychology. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, basically it's like people, you said what? I said it's used a lot in advertising and like targeting yeah. on ads. Yeah, I can tell. So uh, basically okay, yeah. we put like people like dealing with inefficient business processes, you know, lacks of systems. Uh, they have poor understanding of social media marketing strategy, either because of a lack of time, a lack of exposure or a lack of investment, uh, lack of emphasis put on those digital presence and sales channels. I was pitching to somebody not too long ago um, about like their own like lack of investment in that particular channel, despite it making up a lot of their revenue. Um somebody who wants to grow and expand their business or product offering, maybe they lack the funds or the revenue growth to support it. Um, And somebody who has no real knowledge of brand strategy. And this is just, again, like high level things that we're just putting down there. Um, This doesn't necessarily mean like we're not, this is still a work in progress. You know, this is just what we started with. Obviously Mm -hmm. unique challenges would probably be like, you know, poor digital presence or a lack of consistent branding across platforms for people who have either an audience or multiple platforms already. Um, and obviously our solutions there would be like brand strategy and like, you know, web design and development and probably some other things, depending on how far along we can get. But, um, a secondary audience, BIPOC founders and startups, obviously the whole point is to try and accelerate the insertion of us into the industry, whether that be into like people who are doing, who are trying to join the industry as a worker or people who are trying to create their own companies within that industry. So we just put some more stuff uh, related to that. And that's pretty much as far as we kind of got as far, yeah. you know, so far as this, obviously there's a, we could go into greater detail, but I feel like with this whole page, we have a pretty good idea of what, how we want to come across to our target audience being the people in our community. Um, and you know, what our main goals are. And like, we have an idea, we have something we can kind of hold a ruler against or shine a light against when we're trying to make you know, marketing decisions or branding decisions or even business decisions when it comes to like choosing who and what and when we're going to support stuff. So uh, that's been our, that was our branding session. That was our, the brand strategy stuff that we came up with over the yeah. last, you know, hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then do you want to go into the Figma or do you want to save that for like socials and just like get feedback on that, that um one. i feel like we could probably save it for socials and or go into it later i mean obviously this video is already going to be super long but yeah. i, I want to say it's about an hour and some change mm-hmm. um but i think this is a good place because we already went over a lot of stuff and um you gotta cut both <laughs> both sessions together yeah um, or we can keep them separate i don't know we could but, keep them separate but um but yeah, I think I think this is a good a good place to stop for now. Yeah. Obviously, for those who are watching, um, whenever we do get to posting this online, 
Um, if you have any questions or some things you want us to go into more detail about, or some things you found interesting, drop them in the comments or, you know, DM us or message us, whatever, just make some noise about it and share it, like share people the fact that, yo, we're trying this hundred day challenge and it might be crazy, but we're, we're going full speed ahead. So, uh, hop on it. If you really want to be able to see what it's like to try and take something from ground zero, just with, you know, what you've earned or what you've learned. For sure. Stop sharing. Um, yeah. I think that was pretty, pretty good. We got through it all. Um, anything you want to add? What is this? Uh, no, not really. I think it's pretty much everything. Yeah, same. Same, same. Cool. Obviously, uh, we're going to keep working on stuff outside of this, yeah. but high level update, I guess. Good first, good first day, I think. Getting it, getting the foundations laid and solidified.